Hello everyone. I hope you've had a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Can you believe it is already 2021? I hope that you've taken some time to take a deep breath and uh, take stock of 2020, the lessons that we have learned and the things that we have all resiliently gotten through together. This week for our story share, we are gonna be hearing from Anne Hurst and she is gonna be reading for us, The Horse Who Lived Upstairs by Phyllis McGinley. Enjoy. Hi, we are going to read today, The Horse Who Lived Upstairs by Phyllis McGinley and illustrated by Helen Stone. There once was a horse named Joey who was discontented. He was discontented because he didn't live in a red barn. With a weather vane on top like this, And he didn't live in a green meadow where he could run about and kick up his heels like this. Instead, he lived upstairs in a big brick building in New York. Up there. Joey worked for Mr. Pulaski who sold fruits and vegetables to city people. Joey pulled the wagon through the city streets. And in New York, there isn't room for barns or meadows. So every night when Joey came home, he stepped out of the shaft of the wagon and into an elevator and up he went to his stall on the fourth floor of a big brick building. And it was a fine stall and Joey was very comfortable there. He had plenty of oats to eat and plenty of fresh straw to lie in. He even had a window to look out of, but still Joey was discontented. How I long to sip fresh water from a babbling brook he often exclaimed. And then he would sniff discontentedly at the old bathtub near the elevator, which served him as a watering trough. It wasn't that he had to work hard. Mr. Pulaski was kind to him and brought him home at five o'clock every day. In the winter, Joey had a blanket to wear on his back to keep him warm. And in the summertime, Mr. Pulaski got him a hat to wear on his head to keep him cool. And every day he had many inter interesting adventures. Sometimes he'd meet a policeman who gave him sugar the sugar cube in his hat. Sometimes ladies patted him on the nose and fed him carrots. He was introduced to the high-bred horses who drew the handsome cabs along the plaza. He saw the children playing in the playgrounds and in the parks but it made no difference to Joey. This is no life for a horse. He used to say to Percheron who lived in the stall next to him, we city horses don't know what real living is. I want to move to the country and sleep in a red barn with a weather vane on top and kick up my heels in a green meadow. So how happy was he one day, Mr. Pulaski said to him, Joey, I think I could sell more vegetables if I drove a truck. 
I'll miss you, Joey, but you'll like it on the farm where I'm going to send you. The next morning, a big motor van rolled up. Joey got inside and away he went to the country. Of course, he said goodbye to the Percheron. Goodbye, Joey, called his friend. I hope you'll be contented on the farm. When Joey reached the country, sure enough, there was the barn with its weather vane and there was the meadow. This is the life, cried Joey to himself, but poor Joey. The barn was cold in the winter and hot in the summer. He didn't have a blanket and he didn't have a hat and he had very little time to kick up his heels in the green meadow for all day long he pulled a plow through the earth. The plow is harder to pull than a wagon. And besides, the farmer worked from sunrise to sundown instead of the eight hours Joey was used to. Sometimes he forgot to put fresh straw in his stall and no one thought to give him any sugar or carrots. There were plenty of children but they climbed on his back and teased him when he wanted to eat. And instead of Percheron, there was a cross old gray horse next door to him who looked down his nose at Joey because Joey knew so little about farm life. One day when he wasn't pulling a plow because it was Sunday, Joey saw several people picnicking in the meadow. He decided to join them for they looked as if they came from the city and he thought they might have a lump of sugar in one of their pockets. When he reached the spot, they had gone for a walk. So he ate up their lunch. When they came back, they were very angry and Joey was shut up in the stall for the rest of the day. He didn't even have a window to look out of. He was lonely for his friends, the policemen and the ladies who patted him on the nose. He was lonely for the high bred horses and all the interesting sights of the city. I don't think I belong in the country after all, sighed Joey. I'm now more discontented than ever. Next day, he heard the honk of a horn. He looked from the door of the barn and whom should he see but Mr. Pulaski getting out of the truck. I've come for Joey, Mr. Pulaski told the farmer. I can't get any more tires for my truck, so I think I'll sell fruit and vegetables from my wagon again. My goodness, but Joey was happy. He went back to the city with Mr. Pulaski and got into the elevator and up he went to the fourth floor of the big brick building. And there was his stall and there was his window for him to look out of. And there was his friendly Pesheron. Welcome back, Joey, exclaimed, exclaimed Pesheron. I have missed you. The policeman has missed you. The lady customers have missed you. And so have the children in the playgrounds and the parks. Tell me, how did you like the country? The country is all right for country animals, Joey said, but I guess I'm just a city horse at heart. And he was never discontented again. the end. Thanks for reading this with me. Thank you, Anne, for sharing that wonderful story. I really liked it uh, and it resonated with me deeply. I think 2020 has been a year for a lot of us where we've thought to ourselves, well, if only I was here, if only I had that. And uh, it's been focused on what we don't have or what we may be losing. And, and those are very real things <laughs> and they're how we process 
But sometimes when we do that too much, it uh, blinds us to the very real good things and blessings that we have going for us right where we are. So as I hear this story, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, maybe that's a practice that I want to take into 2021. And maybe that's one that you can take into 2021 as well. When you catch yourself being like the horse who thinks, oh, I'm not meant to be here, if only I were there. You can stop and think, maybe right here is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And how can I take a moment to look around and appreciate the little things that I, that I do have? Even though I may want other things that are not n near me or to be in other places, that's okay. But don't let that want, that grass is greener mentality blind you from the wonderful things that you have around you, the community, the family, the roof over your head even. Let's appreciate what we have it helps us to be grateful, helps us, helps to keep us happy, right? And a little thing that I'd started doing for myself in 2020, especially when I'd wake up and really struggle with some just anxiety and sad thoughts and wishing I were somewhere else, maybe with my family back in California, I would say to myself, Psalm 118, one of those verses, it says, uh, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I would wake up in the morning and make myself say that because it reminded me that it's okay if I'm sad. It's okay if I'm angry. It's okay if I have any if only feelings of wanting to be in other places. But I also have to practice gratitude. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to go on a walk and I'm going to look at the birds or I'm going to appreciate uh, my partner. I'm going to be thankful for my family. I'm going to look at the sun. I'm going to take a moment to appreciate the little things and acknowledge that I am here. New York City is where we live and I'm going to find a way to appreciate that because that might not always be the case. We may move and you may move and... Things are never always constant, right? Change is always going to happen. So if we know change is always going to happen, let's appreciate where we are. So this story is a wonderful way to remind us of how we can step into 2021. Let's be open and hopeful to new and good things, to vaccines and to being with our friends again. But let's also remember to take stock of what we do have and the people we have and be grateful and thankful for that. I hope you uh, stay safe. I hope that you stay sane and I will see you in the new year. Be well, friends.